All right, wasn't a greatly productive day, but we got a little bit done. We did acquire some parts. Waiting on some more stuff to come in, but I got a few things done. I wanted to point out some stuff on this. Uh, this is the rear brakes, and uh, we stripped everything down, cleaned and painted the backing plate. Uh, it never hurts to get some spray bomb, even if that's what you have. Spray bomb is better than nothing. Go ahead and spray the backing plate with a little protection so it doesn't continue to rust and uh, has a little bit of barrier between the weather and the steel. So we got that cleaned up. We uh, cleaned and freed our adjusters. We have our new wheel cylinders. These are TRW, which are Varga wheel cylinders. And uh, why would that be important? Well, here's a real good example of what I don't like to see. Uh, you know, this guy is a customer that I see once a year. He's a snowbird. And uh, obviously, he spent good money on these rear brakes somewhere. These are uh, fairly new. Uh, you can see there's plenty of shoe left here. Uh, the job looked pretty fresh. Other than nothing was cleaned up. They just put new shoes on and new cylinders. Uh, now, these are the cylinders that they use. These are no-name cylinders. You'll see there's no identification markings or anything on those. They're fairly new. And you can see that the fluid is coming out of the uh, boot there. And if you peel the boot back, this is already uh, shot. It's already bypassing fluid past the rubber coming out of the piston there. So <clears throat> I don't think that would have happened with a better quality uh, wheel cylinder. That's why I always try to get the Varga or a German cylinder. You don't want to just get the uh, cheapest wheel cylinder you can put your hands on because a lot of time it won't last the life of the brake shoes. And uh, this is what we see here. Uh, you could very easily use these over again. They've been contaminated with brake fluid, so we're going to go ahead and change these out with some new ones and uh, get the drums painted up tomorrow, knock the rust off of those and paint those also so they're protected. And, you know, when you look through the wheel, you don't see a rusty uh, drum, you know, right after you did a brake job. You want to clean that up and make it look like you serviced it. So, we have our new shocks for the back. We have our uh, soft lines we need to put on. That's why the brake line's not connected. I'm going to go ahead and replace the soft lines, and I'll reattach the hard line. Got the valve covers off and the uh, oil drained out. Motor's in uh, excellent shape. Looks like it was... Uh, factory long block at one time or rebuilt by somebody that really cared it has all new uh, head bolts and hardware and uh, appears to be a really sweet looking motor so I changed the oil on it and it didn't look like it was that old uh, it's probably more of an age thing than a mileage type thing so that's where we're at with that that's ready to go and uh, I found a vacuum leak the intake boots were uh, loose so I tightened those up. Same on the front, went ahead and cleaned everything up, painted the backing plates, freed and uh, greased the adjusters, new uh, Varga wheel cylinders. Uh, the front cylinder almost appears to be uh, you know, a Volkswagen. Seems to have a Volkswagen part number on it right there. And uh, the front shoes were pretty thin, pretty thin, pretty thin. So we got that just in time. The other side's actually a little thinner. It had a seized up adjuster, which was uh, letting one of the shoes contact the drum. And you can see how uh, thin that is. That's right, well, it's in the metal. And you see the lining's right there. There's the metal. So this was uh, perfect timing on the front brakes. I think I'd made a little notation that it needed front brakes last time that I uh, did a valve adjustment. Here's my uh, blown out strut. On this side you can see all the uh, oil coming out of the uh, strut there. Well, it's never good when that happens. The struts are the only things that didn't come in. I'll get those tomorrow. And uh, here's some of our other parts that we'll be uh, installing. We've got a TRW uh, master cylinder, which is Varga. So that's a uh, Good quality, you want to make sure that you get a good quality uh, master cylinder if you're going to do it yourself or have somebody else do it. Make sure that they don't get a master cylinder from a big parts house because a lot of times it won't be the 
you know, the proper brand. Sometimes they can get TRW. I saw somewhere where uh, somebody said that they had been using Rock Auto and uh, Hans loves Rock Auto and we've had really good luck with them. I bought all the sensors for my Mustang and stuff like that. I've never tried to buy uh, air-cooled Volkswagen parts from them though. I like to uh, stick with the guy that I get my stuff from and uh, I'll explain that to you. And uh, here's our rear uh, hoses, our soft lines. Here's our uh, those are probably the rear and these are the fronts. I have to make sure to match those up because uh, I think we might have got those mixed up. These look like rears and the fronts. You can have uh, two different types. These look like these are the ones that screw right into the uh, wheel cylinder unless there's a block in the back that they go into. I'll have to take a look at that. No big deal. It's easily corrected. This is the new uh, brake line that goes from the master cylinder to the reservoir lines. It used to be blue. Uh, I still have some of the blue stuff. Apparently it's like gold now. But this is uh, made for brake fluid. It has the blue writing on it. And it says BMW on it right there. So uh, it's got to be good. We've got two sets of shoes here, front and rear. I'm going to go ahead and replace the back ones, like I said. Those are the uh, backs, I do believe. And then uh, these will be our fronts. And I shouldn't be uh, opening these with dirty hands, but I'm pretty confident that the parts will be correct. It's another thing, you know, if you... Uh, if you're not sure about your parts, keep your boxes nice in case you have to return it. And that way the next guy that has to buy the parts isn't uneasy when he gets a box with a bunch of fingerprints on it. So that's our uh, main brake line that runs through the car. We may or may not need that. I always try to get one of those and have it on hand when I put the uh, master cylinder in because there's a brake line that goes through the uh, front firewall and you have to bend it around and sometimes if it has any rust it can be brittle and uh, break. So, here's our uh, rear shocks. These are uh, KYBs. These should be a little better than what's on there. And uh, they come loaded with the strap on, and you just pull the strap off once you uh, install. And they do come with the uh, new hardware and spacers also. For the late model, you'll need these spacers. And uh, I think that's about it. What's all this goodness cost? One thing I never do when I work on Volkswagens is I never mark the parts up. And uh, it's not a good business model, I know. But it seems like a lot of times when people try to make a profit on the parts, they're tempted to buy the cheapest part possible and get the most margin that they can. And I would rather bolt the best possible part on that I can and just make the money on the labor it's just better that way for the customer and the mechanic because when you use inferior parts and your work comes back it's it doesn't reflect good on yourself so uh, the little bit of money that i lose on uh, buying the parts and marking them up is uh, made up for by the uh, fact that the car is not going to come back with a failure and if it does i know that where i buy my parts they'll stand behind them that's why I like to buy all my stuff from Triangle. And uh, sometimes we don't always agree on everything, but uh, they've always been very good to me and supplied me with parts when I need them. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. So that's what's going on with that stuff. I need to get the uh, wheel bearings repacked. I'll probably do that tonight. I'm going to get the valve covers washed up, the new gaskets on those, clean the uh, strainer and the strainer plate. And, uh, We'll get the oil back in it in the morning. We'll do a little tuning on the uh, motor and uh, should be able to get everything knocked out by tomorrow and have this go home if I get my struts in a good uh, good time in the morning. So yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of disassemble work up there to put those in, but uh, should be very nice when we get it all done. So, so that's what's going on with the uh, 73 Super Beetle. And uh, try to turn this back on tomorrow. We'll take it for a test drive, see how it stops, and see how it runs. It's idling a little high. I think that's probably the uh, intake boots that were loose, and I uh, got those tightened up. So we should be ready to go on that.
so that's about where we're at the uh, rain burned off it's a beautiful evening tonight a little cold front moved through and uh that's what's going on so that's what's happening in uh darren land so uh thanks for watching thanks for following along on the uh, 73 and uh tomorrow we'll go for a little ride and we'll get all this completed and we'll see how we did see how it rides and stops so until then thanks for watching